Hi, this is Jared from Yellowwood Guiding, and in this video we're going to talk about depth of field. If you're in aperture mode, the mode I recommend, controlling your aperture, this is what we're looking to do. That aperture is going to create different aspects and blurring the background. This is really important, especially for this picture, the blue flax getting a nice detail on the inside of the flower, all the details. But if I didn't use the right f-stop, you would see that this is actually a dirt road. But by blurring the background with the right f-stop, a lower f-stop, I get to blur it. So we're going to look at how f-stop impacts when you're using the lens, in specific, the, the length of your lens, but also using your subject. Macro photography is a great way to see depth of field, but we're also going to look at it in landscapes and wildlife photography. So check out here. In a landscape photo, we want just about everything we could possibly get in focus in focus. Generally, in landscapes, you want to focus about one-third of the way into the image, somewhere right about here. And using a high f-stop, usually around f16 to f18, you're going to get the best detail on your lenses and getting the most depth of field. And I want to have a lot of depth of field because that's almost a few miles away from one side of the image to the other. And I want to get that whole valley of, uh, of Forest Canyon in focus, even got the sheep down here in focus. That's what we're going to look at. So to take a look at depth of field, I'm going to bring out the details panel over here and see all my settings. So here's a shot. This was one of my first test shots when I got my macro lens. It's 150 millimeters. And here at f2.8, the lower the number, the shallower the depth of field. Shallow means how much is in focus. That's a very small amount of size. So watch as we go through the images here. We're going to go from 2.8 to 4. Go up to f6.3. Starting to see more detail on this side of that stick. Keep going up. More detail in the back. More detail in the front. I focused right in the dead middle of the stick. Go up to f10. A little bit more detail. Up 13 even more detail. That's what we're looking to. We're going to spread the detail across our depth of focus. So here's a perfect example. At f13, I, I like this stump, but there was just a lot of stuff back there. It was distracting. That was actually a tree, but at a low f-stop, f4, this is blurry. I know on the video it's a little bit uh, inconsistent because of the downgrade in the quality come over here to the midge. This midge, I was using a very long a long lens, 150 millimeters, but f11, being because I was very close, is only a few millimeters across. That's really important to get just the midge in focus. Here with the flower, the columbine, I was using the same lens, but at f9, I had actually a much deeper depth of focus because I was much farther away. Back behind this flower is actually a spruce tree. I don't want you to see the spruce tree. I want you to see the nice blur and see the detail of how wonderful this columbine is. I had to use F9, however, to get from the tip of this petal to here. This is where your depth of preview button really comes in handy and check your depth of field. Using a macro shot here at F8, I was able to blur this background in Moraine Park and get a nice green background to complement the flower and the bee. Now in landscapes, Generally, you want to be around somewhere around f16 to f18. I used 18 here. It does degrade the image a little bit after you go past f16, but I wanted to slow down the water and get the flowy water, and I focused right about here. When you focus in depth of field for landscapes, if you focus one-third of the way, your depth of field by using a high f-stop, that makes the whole rest of the background in focus. As you increase your f-stop, it's one-third in front and two-thirds behind where you focus. So I focused right about there. Coming over to these flowers, using a deep depth of field, I got all these different leaves in focus, at but just shallow enough. You go to f2.8, it's actually blurry up here, and that's not what I wanted. I wanted everything in focus. Come over here to this wonderful autumn color. Look at all the detail. This is a bunch of garbage down below, but by using a low f-stop, I get to blur it, and now you look just at the subject. You come over to the same idea. Deep depth of field. When you're using macro, you're generally at one side of your lens. This lens is able to go up to f22, or you go to the other side of the lens at 2.8. But look at the difference. I'm focusing just on the same exact leaf, but the depth of field really changes and it impacts the image. Here, where depth of field is really important is getting the right things in focus. If you look at this image, this edge of the leaf really isn't in focus at, at 7.1, but if I go up to f14, it does start to come into focus. That's really important. Same thing here, I was using at f4, the 
stem of the leaf is not in focus. Going up to 13, it was. And that's what really makes this image. But even at f22, if you're stretching it, the closer you get, you still can't get everything in focus on this neat little uh, flower as it lost all of its, uh, its elements. You take a look at the fox here. Using wildlife, shallow depth of field is really important for two reasons. It gives us a fast shutter speed, but also blurs the background. I don't want you to see the forest behind my fox. I want you to see right here. I want to get in focus from the tip of the nose to the ears. You notice on the back side, though, that is out of focus. Here's a perfect example that using that same macro lens we've been looking at, you go in super shallow depth of field, the petals are actually out of focus except for the very edges. That creates a very artistic element. Here's a great example of where you focus. At f8, focused it on this pine cone right here. The thing to understand about depth of focus is it's a plane. It's the same plane as the back of your camera. So if you hold your, your hand flat against what you're focusing on, that's what's going to be in focus and not. So if we move through here I focus right here, this uh, side of the cone right there, that's the same plane that's in focus. So was this. If I move over though, by changing my angle, my or angle, my plane is actually flat across here, and this is behind. This is behind that level of focus. You can see it in the leaves or the needles here of the tree. The depth of focus controls by going very shallow at 28. Just that one element on the same plane is in focus. So this is a really nifty way to play and getting an interesting thing by focusing just on the tips of these pine needles. Get a really interesting sort of abstract idea. Here's where using the plane. And what I do is you take your hand, you hold it straight out from your camera back. That's the angle you should have. Here, this dragonfly, or pardon me, a damselfly, is at an angle. And even at a, at a deep depth of field at f8, it really wasn't enough to get the back end in focus. I focused on the eye. But here, they're actually flat from the back of my camera, these two damselflies, and they're both in focus. Got the background blurred at f8. Here, using a very, very shallow depth of field, I was able to get just the tip of this little fly's head in focus. Everything else is blurred. Here with this, uh, this weevil, got the head in focus, but you go to the next picture, uh, he moved. I didn't have enough depth of field to get from the tip of his nose to the back of his body. This is depth of field in perfect sense. Look how shallow that is on the grasshopper at f7.1, but check out 2.8. Just a teeny little bit. The closer you get to your subject, the more depth of field comes into play. Using a very shallow depth of field is extremely shallow. Here again with wildlife, at, f at f4, because we're much, much farther away from the animal, I actually get from the tip of its nose all the way almost to the back of the antlers in focus. And that's important. I don't want you to get all these leaves in focus. Take a look at this deer, however. At f4, I focus right on the eye, but the far side of the antlers are not in focus. If I wanted to bring those in focus, I'd have to go up to f6, f8, and bring them in. Here, perfect example again, F4, this side of the antlers in focus, the far side is not. So depth of field, going back to landscapes, focusing about a third of the way into the image. At F16, I got from here, the rocks at my feet, all the way out miles away to Long's Peak. So depth of field, if you're shooting landscapes, F16. If you're shooting wildlife, go down to F4. And if you're shooting macros, that's going to really depend. So here, I wanted to get a little bit more detail, went up to F14 got a little bit more sharpness out of my lens at that level, but landscapes f14 is the way to go. Looking at the depth of field, that's really going to determine on how you look at your images. So remember, play with your depth of field. If you have a depth of preview button, use it and make sure that you're getting everything you want in focus. It's especially important for wildlife. If I wanted to get this side of the antler in focus as well as that, I'd want a deep, deeper depth of field than f4. But to start off, if you're shooting landscapes, f16. If you're shooting wildlife, go down to f4. If you're shooting macro, either at f28 or f22, that's going to help you get your best pictures and start to play with your depth of field.